So yes, you might have noticed that GPTs are trending. And when you give people awesome technology, they always find ways to improve humanity. Which is why we saw GPTs built to help diagnose the patient, to grow your business with Hermosi, to create memes that Elon Musk might like, to Simpsonize you, help you get rid of your bed bugs, and most importantly, to heal childhood trauma and mommy issues. And all Plus users have access to it as of 9th of November, which means we're entering a new era where almost everyone will be able to create their own helpful chatbot just by talking to a chatbot. No programming skills required. But a lot of questions regarding legal matters are still open. Also, I want to be fully transparent with you. Even though it's in my interest that you watch this video for a long time and still remain interested in the topic, I have to warn you that a lot of users that have been creating custom GPTs had their data leaked and it's very easy to do so. People have reported that they managed to get files that were used for training GPTs and there's a suspicion that it's somehow connected to code interpreter. So be careful. Anyway, in this video, I'll show you how to make your own chatbot in 10 minutes or less, why it makes sense to build one and why sometimes you might want to avoid making one. Also, I'll show you how to give it extra powers with Zapier. And in the end, let's talk about why we need open source version of custom GPT builder. Actually, why we need open source for everything. So let's begin. First, why should you build one? The shortest answer, you should build your own GPT if classic ChatGPT isn't knowledgeable enough on specific topics that you need help with. As you know, ChatGPT knowledge cutoff is April 2023, which means that it might lack some really relevant information. For instance, if you need help with, with the latest Streamlit or Langchain features, you could create a bot trained on the latest documentation. For company owners, you might want to check out Peter Lovell's Nomad GPT. It provides good use case for building custom GPT. You might know Peter as a creator of Nomad List, a website that's very popular among digital nomads because it offers a lot of useful information about various cities worldwide. His chatbot is powered by Nomad List's live data through an API. Another good use case might be to analyze your data. Maybe you're a content creator or you own a business and you need a personal assistant to analyze hot trends and help you come up with strategies for growth. And here's why you shouldn't build one. In case you want a chatbot that sounds like you, don't do it. It won't be as efficient as you'd like. A better method would be fine tuning. And I have a video on that topic, so you might want to check it out. And finally, if you're building a chatbot so that you can upload the book, such as Ultimate Boring Stuff with Python, which is a free book, by the way, or Little Prince or something like that, don't do it. If it's a free or a very well-known book, classic ChatGPT already knows everything about about it, so you're just wasting your time. So let's set up one. Once you log into your ChatGPT account, click on Explore and you'll see an option to create a new GPT. Click on it. This will take you to GPT Builder. Next, you want to tell the builder what your GPT is about. In my case, I wanted to know everything about the latest OpenAI's docs, where they specify how to call their vision and text-to-speech API. I've already scraped data from their blog posts with this simple Python script, and it automatically saved the content into files. When it comes to communication style, I want the chatbot to be concise and to avoid making educated guesses. Instead, I wanted to ask me if it has any concerns. Also, I got a suggestion for a name. It's Codex, which is fine. And I also got a little bit depressing looking avatar. It looks like an Eastern European comic blocks, but it's fine. I'll accept it. And lastly, the bot just asked me a few more questions in order to refine the communication style. And then let's head over to configure tab. And this is where you can see the custom instructions that the bot has created for me. Also, this is where I can add files that will give this bot some custom knowledge. In this case, I'm going to upload those scraped files that I previously mentioned. And by the way, you can upload multiple files. And I'm going to allow all the capabilities except for Dali because this is a coding assistant. Now let's get to the exciting part. There is a way to give your chatbot some extra powers by adding something called AI actions. In the dev day's presentation, we saw how Sam's colleague used Zapier in her 
ChatGPT to check her Google Calendar, find conflict if there is any, and inform Sam that she will be busy through a Slack message. I want to show you how to do it, but my aim is a little bit different. I want to allow GPT to create a Notion page and to paste all of our conversation there so that I can turn our conversations into a Medium blog. And this is something that you can do easily by adding a Zapier AI action. You need to click here first. Next, you want to click on import from URL and I'll show you in a second where to find that URL. You're going to check out Zapier's page where they specify how to integrate their AI actions into GPT. I'll link this page in the description box for you. And this is where you'll find the URL that you should copy. And once you copy it, a bunch of text will appear. That's fine, nothing to worry about. Next, you want to go back and we can see that the action has been successfully added to the GPT. However, we still have two more steps. In order for this to work, you want to go back to Zapier's page and there you'll see certain instructions for Zapier. You need to paste these instructions to GPT's custom instructions field and these are general instructions and just copy paste this part shamelessly. But the next part is quite interesting. First, you should specify required actions and write a short description of the action. In my case, it's just create a Notion page and paste the content there. And as a final step, you should provide in configuration URL. Zapier has defined what the base of that URL should look like. And it's quite simple, just copy paste this part. But after this equal sign, you have to describe your action by writing natural language. Again, there's no coding involved here. Just paste this base, add description of your action, which again, in my case, it's going to be create a Notion page. And that's it, you just made your GPT. Let's see if it works or not. So when I asked the code dog GPT to write code that's called GPT-4 Vision API, we can see that it successfully writes the code and it, it's exactly the same as the code in the examples that OpenAI provided. It identifies correctly the name of the model and structures everything really well. And just for comparison, let's see what happens when I query the classic chat GPT. So I'm using the same prompt. And as we can see, ChatGPT knows nothing about latest GPT-4 Vision API, and it even admits that it just hallucinated a bunch of stuff and it's for illustration purposes. So it's not really helpful. Now let's try to use Zapier AI actions. I'm going to ask GPT to create a Notion page, as, and as we can see, this will trigger Zapier. Unfortunately, I never managed to turn this ChatGPT message into a Notion page, even after playing around with it for a few hours. And I'm convinced that this is happening because it's still in its alpha stage. And I just want to add that even though I never managed to make Notion work, I got Zapier to work with Gmail. And I successfully converted the content of one of the chat messages into an email draft. So that made me realize that it all depends on the platform. Some platforms might work, others might not, so don't get too frustrated if you try to integrate something with Zapier and it fails. Try it out and tell me if you managed to do it successfully or not. And finally, let's talk about the potential open source version of custom GPT. But first, I want to show you something. There's an excellent presentation of the state of LLM apps right now, and I'll provide the link to it. The data comes from Streamlit, a popular front-end framework for Python that many developers use for building AI apps. And the results are a little bit scary. The graph shows that almost 74% of all AI apps rely on OpenAI and GPT-4 models. And that's scary because essentially the entire industry relies almost solely on one company, OpenAI. And that's a lot of power in the hands of only one company. A really nice way to take some of that power back is what Langchain is promising. A feature that lets you build custom GPT and it's called OpenGPT. The idea is that you can avoid using any of GPT models and instead you can use Anthropics API. Imagine that you can build a custom GPT on top of any LLM that provides an API. That would be pretty cool and that's what Langchain is trying to achieve here. But as of right now, OpenGPT unfortunately cannot access any custom knowledge. They're planning on adding it, but currently you don't have an option to upload files to OpenGPT and to teach it something new. And also they're planning on releasing a marketplace or a store just like OpenAI's GPT store. So even though this is work in progress, we should all keep an eye on what's happening with Langchain's OpenGPT feature, because right now it sounds pretty exciting and promising. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.